And here with me to break it all down is Dan Senor. He is a former senior advisor to the Romney Ryan ticket in 2012. He's also the founder of the Foreign Policy Initiative. All right, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. This Second Amendment comment, was it a gaffe? Was it a joke? Was it intentional? When you heard it, what did your gut tell you? My gut told me that uh, I don't think he was intentionally trying to incite violence. Uh, but I think he was joking about subject matter that could have the effect of inciting violence. And when you are anybody, let alone the nominee of a major political party who's asking the American people to make him president in less than 100 days, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility to choose your words carefully, which he has a pattern of not doing. So if you look at what he said about Megyn Kelly, if you look at what he said about the physically disabled reporter from the New York Times, if you look at what he said about uh, the Russia hacking Hillary Clinton's emails, if you look at what he said about Judge Curiel, I'm mean, going to go on and on and on. After each one of these incidents, he says, no, 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 what I said was taken out of context, so you're misinterpreting what I said, and then he has to clean it up. If you have a pattern of doing these things, one would think at some point you start to be more careful, especially when you're talking about such a raw and emotional subject subject as violence and guns. I mean, yeah. here's a good, you know, rule of thumb. If the Secret Service has to put out a statement to respond to what you said, which they did, mm -hmm. if the Secret Service has to put out a statement, because they're in the business of protecting these officials and candidates like they're protecting Hillary Clinton, if they have to put out a statement, you've probably gone too far. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, sort of his uh, part of the pattern is to say, no, 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 you're reading too much into it, no, 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 you're twisting my words, no, 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 the media's done it to me again. Right. Uh, and so far it seems to be working. Well, working in what sense? I mean, I think with his supporters, his, with his supporters, mm -hmm. but his supporters represent. I mean, he, he has about 12 or 13 million voters who voted for him during the Republican primary. He's now competing in a field in the general election with about 120 to 130 million voters. Right. So he's got it competing a, a whole new field. Now, if you look at polling, the real clear average poll of polls has Hillary right now ahead seven and a half points nationally. Right. OK, that's double what Obama was against McCain and Romney in 2008 and 2012, respectively. So he, the polling is bad. Polling in the states, particularly states that Romney won, like Georgia, Arizona, North Carolina, mm -hmm. Utah, those are states that now the Hillary Clinton campaign is looking at. So, I mean, he, he's actually not going well. I mean, right. his numbers are in terrible shape. And, and I think it could have down-ballot implications. It could really hurt Republican chances in the Senate and the House. Okay, so you're a guy, I want to get back to the, the poll numbers. Yeah. We, we dug up a really interesting number. But, uh, you know, your job is to be, a, to, to advise these campaigns. So, put yourself in this position. You know, the, the interesting thing about this comment is it also comes on the heels of, you know, 50 Republican national security experts saying that Trump poses, you know, a risk to national security. Correct. Right. So th there you have sort of this funny little comment, if you want to say that, but then some some people who know the business of national security who are saying you should be concerned. How do you advise your candidate? How do you spin that? Because now it's out in the ether. How do you spin that if you're trying to run a campaign? I think the most important thing for Republican candidates to do at this point is to do everything they can to separate from Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Not easy to do. It's complicated. But when you endorse him, when you embrace him, you basically either own everything he says between now and November or you spend the entire next 90 days explaining every day why you disagree with him, mm -hmm. which is also not a good place to be. If you want to run your own campaign and, and basically say the following, regardless who is president, whether it's Donald Trump or it's Hillary Clinton, I think both of them are bad options. But whoever is president, you need a strong independent voice and an independent Congress that's going to be check, a check on that presidency. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, the best message for Republican members of Congress who are running for re-election. You know, and now we're sort of, uh, there's a growing chorus of Republicans and independents uh, that are sort of lining up, uh, if not in support of Hillary Clinton, then at least against Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton, the campaign is starting a coalition of Independents and Republicans, these these gaffes, uh, maybe they're starting to hurt. Maybe they're not. But if you were advising Donald Trump, keeping in mind that these gaffes have actually helped him along the way. I mean, this is how he got this far: is sort of this off the cuff. I'm a real guy. I'm a real. I'm a blue collar billionaire. Would you advise him to look just stick to the script? No, because I think that worked for him. And he's basically running a primary campaign in the general election. So we were constantly told by people around him, don't worry, he's behaving this way in the primary because it's working for him in the primary, yeah. but once he gets to the general election, he'll pivot. 
He'll change his behavior. Right. He has not changed. No. So it, I agree with you. It worked for him in the primary. I just don't, as, as the polling bears out, as we're seeing right now, as his numbers are crashing, I don't think this is going to work in the general election. I mean, just to take a, a voting demographic. You can break these demographics down. White college vo white voters with a college degree. Now, historically, Republican presidential candidates have won those voters big. Mitt Romney won those voters big mm -hmm. against Barack Obama, even though he lost the election. Hillary Clinton, in the, in the latest things, the NBC Wall Street Journal poll, Hillary Clinton is beating Trump with white voters with college degrees by, I think, seven points. I mean, you... Th those are just voters that always go Republican in large right. numbers. So where do you, where, if you're a Republican, where do you go? You're not going right. to get African American and Hispa Latino voters. So wh where where are you actually going? I mean, even when Republicans lose elections, they still do well with those voters. He's get he's getting beaten by her. So I just think right. this is a different field. It's a different environment from the primary. He, I agree with you. Right. It worked for him in the primary. I don't think it works in the general. Speaking uh, about some of those poll numbers, you, you talked about. Uh, I think you said a seven and a half uh, yeah. percent lead uh, going yeah. head to head between. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Something else that we found really interesting in the numbers: 61% of likely voters saying that say that they are less impressed with the Republican nominee's business acumen than they were when the campaign started. Yeah. How concerning should that be for? Uh, Trump's campaign. It should be because it was a big selling point of his campaign, and that is purely a function of him having no message. He's just he's just he gets off message. So on Monday he gave what I thought was actually a pretty good speech to right? the Detroit Economic Club. Yeah. And here we are on Wednesday, and what are we talking about? So whenever he gets the message right, he completely eclipses it within 24, 48, or 72 hours by saying something that makes we will no longer talk about his Detroit Economic Club speech. It's over. Like that, there was an interesting speech. He said some interesting things in it. We will never talk about it again because the moment to be talking about it, we're in the days after it, and here we are in the days after it, and we're talking about him potentially inciting violence. Yeah. So, so it is, it is, it is an inability to stay on message, a complete lack of discipline. Dan Senor, thank you so much for talking. Good to be with, with you. Us.